Hey guys, we're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Got some sort of a Quaker thing going on, a whole bunch of old stuff, and then some new modern art down there. It's just a really neat place to be hanging out, checking out bikes. A little bit overcast today, hoping it doesn't rain, but if it does, it's not a huge deal because I'm looking at the Schwinn E Constance. It's a step through, a beautifully designed bike, trying to be a little bit more affordable with some of the components, giving you a, an awesome mid drive system from Bafang. This is the max drive, really smooth. It's measuring um, cadence and torque, so you get a really fluid power delivery. It doesn't feel overwhelming. This is the 250 watt version. It's running off of a 36 volt, 11.6 .6 amp hour battery. So, you know, kind of average in terms of battery capacity, great in terms of the motor. I really like this one and the fact that they've got an alloy chain guide. That's going to give you just less potential for that chain to, to fall off. And it helps to protect your pant leg or your dress. It's almost like a little chain cover. It's, it's not a full chain cover. You aren't getting protection back here. You could still get a little bit greasy, um, but you look from the side, you're probably not going to snag your pants on those teeth or actually rub on the chain when, you're, when your foot goes by like this. We've got a kickstand, but I noticed that the kickstand's more centrally mounted, so if you walk this bike backwards, kind of like this, out of your garage, that pedal will eventually collide with the kickstand. You have to kind of walk it forward like this and get those pedals moving. There's a lot on this bike that's trying to be comfortable, and again, trying to be affordable, but at $24.99, it doesn't feel that affordable to me. There are a lot of bikes competing in the space now that are kind of on par in terms of price point, but have a bit nicer accessories. So I was noticing that, yes, it has color matched fenders, really nice. They're metal. Metal doesn't tend to rattle as much as plastic. It's a little bit more durable, but they're steel. Okay, so I was using a magnet on those earlier, and even the fork is steel. So you can see this one's been transported around a little bit, and you know, several layers of paint and a clear coat, pretty nicely done, but it got all the way down to the steel, and then that can end up rusting in the future. So the fact that there are a few steel parts and that they're using a, a kind of an old fashioned quill stem here, 25.4 millimeter diameter, versus the new, they're a little bit fatter and uh, internally sealed cups. Quill stems can go up and down, which is nice, but they're just, they don't give you the same kind of like power and stiffness. So see how this is a little bit, it's just narrower. 31.8 millimeters is what new handlebars and a lot of the new hardware is set at. So it's a little bit thicker, 25.4, 31.8, right? Nice like mid-rise bars, they come back to you a little bit, semi-ergonomic, stitched, padded, probably faux leather, kind of a nylon grips going on here. It's not quite like a big, you know, school bus cruiser bar, but it does elevate you a little bit. And then this nice saddle, really oversized, got these gel pockets, they're very soft and springs. That's nice because this is a, a rigid fork. Steel tends to dampen vibration a little bit and give you some comfort. But again, it's not a suspension fork. And this bike weighs about 51 pounds. So not bad actually, considering the steel parts and um, y you know, the, the weight, as I mentioned earlier, is really well distributed there at the center of the frame. But when you add fenders and then you add a rack, this is a aluminum alloy rack, so not gonna rust. Also paint matched, very nice, kind of matches the saddle and everything. Even the battery, like the graphics on the side. It, it is a, is a good looking bike, but there are just, you know, a few more trade-offs here. I, I, maybe this rack could be adjusted a little bit better. I didn't see exactly how, these aren't adjustable length, but you know, if you look at it from the side, the rack's kind of angled forward a little bit. That's, that's sort of cheap and kind of like, well, why, how, how did that happen? Um, and then the drivetrain, Shimano Altus, that's one step up from Shimano's base level and you're getting seven speeds. So I think it's it's just about right for a bike like this that's probably more of a neighborhood, kind of relaxed cruiser, helping someone who might not be riding all the time, probably not commuting with this. It's more of like a get around town and feel good kind of a bike. Uh, but but those compromises, you know, they're, they're, to me that would say like, oh, it's a cheaper bike. Like it's using cheaper parts, the steel and all that it should be priced a little cheaper, and it's really not. You're spending a little bit more money. Schwinn does have some online-only electric bikes that they're shipping direct, or you can find them on Amazon. This one's supposed to be uh, for sale at IEBDs, like independent electric bicycle dealers. I haven't seen it at too many shops. You know, Schwinn's one of these classic, like old-fashioned brands that, that has a great heritage, and, and a lot of people remember their, their Schwinn from when they were a kid. So maybe there's the nostalgia piece, but it's like they're using the exact same parts from, from when you know, from like 40 years ago or something like that. They haven't, they haven't really upgraded, except for the disc brakes, but they're generic. Okay, so these levers, three finger levers, they're mechanical versus hydraulic. 
160 millimeter rotors. So those are kind of the smallest rotors. And you can't, you can't adjust these levers. You know, hydraulic disc brakes let you bring the levers in. Some disc brakes, or rather brake levers, have a second wire that, that tells the motor to cut off when you pull the brakes. It's a motor inhibitor. And these don't have that. So they're just they're very, very, very basic. Uh, just a lot, a lot of the parts on this bike, as I was looking through, I mean, even the pedals, these are, you know, FPD, not really a brand I'm familiar with. Plastic, a little bit of rubber traction. Nice to have some traction, especially if it gets wet and you're gonna be pretty well protected by these fenders. Um, but, but they do feel a little slippery to me. I would want something a little bit bigger, metal. You could replace these for like 20 bucks on Amazon. They have Welgo platform pedals, alloy. Um, these won't cut you and they're, they're not as, you know, sharp. If you slip off, it's just rubber, but but it's, it might be easier to slip off because because they're rubber. So little trade-offs like that. Like if you're just riding around the neighborhood, you're not going too fast. It's not too bumpy. That's that's fine. Um, you know, yeah. Coming coming back here, I think it's 11 to 28 teeth. Not a real wide range here, so you don't have like a super big gear for climbing. But that that chain ring, it's like 40 teeth. Again, you don't have to be super familiar with with bikes and everything. But I, I guess I just didn't feel like this isn't a mountain bike here and you really don't get any parts from from fancier setups one thing that i did notice here this is 27.2 millimeter diameter on that that seat post you could replace it with a suspension seat post if you're someone with back and neck issues but i actually really like the the sprung saddle works pretty well and you know again i might just kind of keep this bike as is if if i was if i was buying it for myself uh one of the things i did like that i feel like they they went a little bit above and beyond on is these rims so they're aluminum alloy double wall and they have these reinforcement eyelets okay not every rim has that and that just spreads out the weight a little bit and these are 13 gauge spokes in the rear and 14 up front the lower the number the thicker the gauge so you know also 36 spokes instead of like 28 or whatever so it seems like you know or 32 it's it's a little bit more there's there's extra support here for someone who might be a little bit heavier. I got all the measurements, specs, and everything back at electricbikereview.com so you can compare and contrast this to other bikes. It says two-year comprehensive warranty. So, you know, that's good, but it might come back down to the shop and stuff. This Bafang stuff, it's its hardware that I've seen before. I actually trust the motor and the battery, and, and I think that they're gonna do pretty well. I like that they were able to bring that top tube down a little bit and really, you know, hug the battery pack because it actually tips out from the side. Here's the charger. So it's just a standard two amp charger, weighs about a pound and a half, easy enough to bring along. You could charge up the battery on the go. Um, I'm gonna try to get this battery off for you because I think the way that it comes off is pretty neat. So you turn the key and then you push it. It's hard to do with one hand, but there we go. It's coming out. This is like 5.8 pounds. It's not too, not too heavy and there it is again, 36 volts. 11.6 amp hours for 417.6 watt hours. Got a little kind of a handle at the top, but be careful. You don't want to drop the battery. Uh, there's the charging port. You can charge it on or off the bike, which is nice. If you really want to make your uh, battery last, it's best to store it in a cool, dry location uh, versus really, really hot or really cold. There we go. And I think I got it. You really want to make sure that it's secured all right. There's a little bit of, a little bit of rattle there, a little bit of play, but not too bad. And then there's this little LED power chart on the side. Again, like kind of nice. And I like where it's positioned. I like that it's removable. I think that's that's a pretty good overview. Nine millimeter quick release skewers front and rear. So you could do tire service a little bit easier if you needed to, if you got a flat or something. These tires, um, they seemed a, a little bit generic. It's like Innova 26 by 2.125. Um, 26 inches is, is a little bit smaller like yeah there's 20 inch for folding bikes 24 for kids bikes and 26 it brings the whole frame down closer to the ground and it gives you maybe a little bit more stability uh, because you can put your feet down you can lower that saddle really low and then kind of you know put your feet down before you even start to pedal and see how that's it's angled pretty far back that's so your feet can go straight down and touch the ground but then when you pedal they go forward and you get better leg extension it's something you see a lot on cruisers and it makes sense here and just doing a quick walk around some nice branding there's the grips and then the cockpit might be a good chance to to actually dive into this thing turn it on so this is the display uh, Bafang it does angle up or down I didn't see any like USB charging ports or anything extra fancy uh, but the display is nice and big so if you're sitting way up here you should still be able to see it all right and then you just turn it on by holding that power button for a couple seconds. Blinks to life. 
sorry about the glare. And then there is a light button. So looks like it's kind of already on if I hold the light button for a second, and then it goes off. So this bike doesn't have any integrated lights, but it does have backlighting. And when it gets dark, it's nice that you can see that, but it's also nice you can turn it off because it can be a little bit distracting if it's too bright. Battery indicator over here, 10 bars. That's really nice, 10% increments. A lot of electric bikes, they only show like five bars, which is, it leaves too much to, it's just not precise enough for me. Speed and miles per hour on the right. There's the light icon. And then down here, we've got different trip stats. So right now it says trip, but if I press I, it says total. So that's like an odometer for the bike. Max speed and average speed. Okay, and then it just, it loops again. Down here we have assist level. It starts in one, but you can take it down to zero and you just ride this like a regular bike. A heavy regular bike, but still, you know, you run out of batteries, that's kind of what it's gonna be like anyway. And you get arrow plus, plus one, two, three, four, or five. Five is the, the mode I've been riding in. If you wanna hit the 20 mile per hour top speed, you probably need to be in four or five. And it's a good idea to, to shift into a higher gear too because the mid-drive, it's, it's leveraging that rear cassette. Um, it's kind of like a manual transmission car where you know you shift gears and you let the motor go faster, but it makes it a lot more efficient. Uh, you know, Hub motors, that's the alternative, and some of the other Trek bikes have a hub motor. And what's interesting about that is you don't have to worry about the chain as much and shifting gears because the motor just does its own thing, but you don't get that efficiency, okay? And some of the weight is positioned back here in the rear wheel, and it makes the wheel kind of fancy versus having that all separated. So this is actually one of my favorite uh, bikes from Schwinn. But again, it's a little bit more expensive than those other ones. So these are some of the trade-offs that you know you gotta think about when you're, when you're getting a bike. Maybe you're just gonna choose it based on color. I really like the, the beautiful blue of this one and they have three other colors too. So it's, it's the kind of bike that you can kind of do a his and hers or you can get your favorite color and feel really good about it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the, uh, the drivetrain is just, it's, for what it is, even though some of the parts on the bike are cheaper, the drivetrain is, is really nice. So coming back up here to the display, the one other thing I wanted to give you some feedback on is uh, you can enter settings by pressing the I button twice, like tap, tap, and then you can cycle through this and change the, the back lighting and reset the, you know, odom well, the, the trip meter. And then there's an area that says password, and that's where you could change some of the settings, but I don't actually know the password, and you probably just kind of want to want to leave it how it is. So I think that's about it. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on this thing and take it for a little ride around town. Okay, maybe you can see the display a little bit better here. I'm trying to get you a nice shot of that. I'm just gonna hop on the bike, see how my foot goes forward a little bit more. It's kind of that relaxed recliner position. And I'm gonna start pedaling. You know, I'm up to like 14 miles per hour. I'd need to shift gears now if I wanted to go faster. And you might have noticed there's a little bit of a delay on that chain ring. So when I stop pedaling, the ring keeps going for just a second. This has a, a pretty good sensor. Again, it's kind of a torque and cadence sensor combined, um, but it's, it's not quite as fast as some of the mountain models, the really expensive mid drives that I've seen on some of the other electric bikes. And as I steer, like I just, you know, it's, the bike is a little bit, there's a little bit of frame flex going on. I noticed that the brake was squeaking. Coming back to some of those generic parts, something to think about. Okay guys, from here you should be able to see that chain ring start and stop. You can also see some of the sprockets in the back while I'm shifting gears and just get a sense for how this sounds, maybe even some of the frame flex stuff. I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist and riding a little bit more aggressively because my hands are free now. do some regular riding and uh, get some turning, maybe stand up a little bit and just try to demonstrate that steering. One 
thing I really do like about the, the motor again is just how quiet it is. It feels smooth, it feels solid. And then the other consideration is shifting gears. So when you're shifting, it's best to sort of ease off the pedals so that you aren't mashing those gears. I'll try to demonstrate that here. Got that Revo shift on the right. Just twist it like that. There we go. Shifted pretty smoothly. Worked out okay. Got the squeaking again. Check out those fenders. <laughs> you know, this is it's a really interesting bike. I feel like you know, Schwinn speaks to me because of its long history, but it's a bigger company. And now, again, the, the website support and not seeing it at a ton of dealers, maybe that's because it's relatively new. And I'm excited to see where they can take this. I like that they have a whole line of bikes and they're trying to get into the e-bike space. I like the drive system they chose for this one. Um, but there's, some of the parts are just, they're just not as, as durable or as adjustable like those brake levers. And I feel like $2,500 is, is kind of a lot considering some of the alternatives you can buy now. I think that's about it. That's the Schwinn E-Constant for the full write-up on this with all the specs and stuff, all the measurements. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, chime in if you have any questions and I'll try to help you out. Ride safe.